I'm going to get started on this project. I've got a piece of 16 quarter maple, it's hard maple. It's kiln dried, it's about 8 inches long. I've got a little bit of a bark inclusion here, but I think I'm going to be able to turn that away. I'm going to put this on the tenon end. I'm going to turn a, a pretty substantial tenon on this for my power grip jaws for my supernova chuck. So it'll be a little bit bigger than normal. I'm, I'm going to be hollowing it, so I want a good grip on it. So I'm going to get this mounted and laid and get started. As with most of the videos I've done so far, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the turning. Been some very good videos out there about turning and hollowing. I'm going to hollow through an inch and three-eighths hole on this end. So I'm going to turn a shoulder here and um, leave the diameter about an inch and three-quarter so to form a bead. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this wood's got another issue that I couldn't see until I roughed it out. I've got a crack running right along here. Um, We'll see if that turns out. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to start over. Okay, I am turned here to shape. Um, that's pretty much final shape. I'm not especially happy with the top. I maybe should have brought it around a little more, but I'm going to go with this. Um, getting ready to hollow it. I'm sanded to 320 because of the uh, texturing that I'm going to do on it and the, and the burning. I can get by with maybe um, not going to 600 or even higher. This is the elbow tool. Tim Yoder sells this on his website. It's a it's a hollowing tool. Most of hollowing tools you need another tool rest and they take a, a good bit to set up. This one sets up very quickly, very easily. Alright, let's see what happens. I'm about as far as I can get in this area right here uh, with my boring bar so I'm going to switch to an, uh, a curve tool this is an easy hollower to be completely honest I'm still learning to use this tool so no guarantees what's going to happen here uh, one thing I have learned the hard way when you're hollowing it pays to check early and check often with your little wire gauge. I had no idea I was that close. I'm not that close up here, and I'm not that close under it, but right there I was really, really too close.
there's actually actually an area marked on the tool that um, you're supposed to keep that on your tool rest. Still get a lot of vibration with it. Of course, I tend to be too aggressive. It removes a lot of material very quickly. Okay, I think I can get in there with my boring bar and get that. So I'm going to I'm going to call that good with this hollower. I'm going to set up the laser. Now. Okay, this is a picture of a basket. I guess it's a basket, but it's a basket weave that I found online. And this is the pattern that I want to put on my vase. Now I've got to figure out how to draw it. I'm working with graph paper. I don't know if you can see the graph on the camera, so I'm going to highlight the areas that I need to highlight. When you're drawing a, a pattern, a lot of times you draw part of it in pencil, that's called your path. Okay, this is um, this is part of the actual weave, so I'm going to draw this in ink. Uh, it, it may not be perfect, uh, so don't worry about that. So what I want to do is I want to draw a line and alternate just on either side of my path. I'm guessing that's a mistake. I'm guessing at about an eighth of an inch on either side. The lines do not overlap or they're not supposed to. If this qualifies as a zentangle, and I think it probably does, I'm going to call it Wopen. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other lines. That name comes from a combination of weave and open. Because this is an open weave pattern.
Okay. We've got two areas here. Three lines and two spaces. The space we're going to call the center. So th this is the center and this is a center. We're going to work from outside center to outside center and draw a zigzag line like this. This little line is outside the center. So we're going to connect the bottoms of two of the lines. We're going to zigzag all the way up the pattern just like that. Zigzag back and forth. Connecting the bottoms. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to call this the center and we're going to connect the outside points starting at the bottoms. This is outside to that outside. Outside to outside. I'm going to do this all the way up. Okay. I've connected. This is the center. Two centers on the two spaces. I've connected the little bars that are outside all the way up in a zigzag pattern. Now all you do is connect the tops except you only go to the diagonal line. Again we're working outside to outside. But we're connecting the tops this time instead of the bottoms. Except we're not, we're only going to the line. And this makes your weave appear. Nope, this is a mistake. You don't want to do that when you're burning. It's easy to get yourself crossed up. Okay, these little triangles that are formed are the areas that get pierced and cut out of the pattern.
there's the triangles and there they are cut out that creates your basket weave or your open weave So to get that pattern, so to get that pattern on my little vase, I remount it in the lathe, um, not with a lot of pressure, but it just makes it easier for me to draw. And I'm going to, once again, I'm going to draw on either side of my center lines, I'm going to guesstimate about an eighth of an inch all the way around. put this V groove in here I know that's how deep I am hollowed same thing You've probably noticed, but I've used several different vases while filming this video. I've got several of them in different stages of completion. A couple different shapes. Okay. Now the best thing I've found for connecting the dots is this craft foam. It's actually self-stick, but I don't take the I don't take the sticky uh, the protective paper off of it um, I got this at Walmart you can get it at Michaels Hobby Lobby probably Target probably most anywhere and again I'm going to I'm going to connect the outs to the outs in a zigzag pattern this is the center of my weave I'm going to go to the other side of my lines back and forth all the way up When you get all done, it will look like that.
these triangles they get cut out and then you burn I've already burned the lines on this I haven't done any shading yet I won't do any shading until these triangles are all cut out have enough of this pierce to do a little bit of shading by highlighting this line adding some shadow underneath you can make it look like it lays on top Shading takes a long time because you don't want your heat set real high. Using a spoon shader. That's because it's kind of dished like a spoon. It's my favorite shader. Or my favorite kind of shader I should say I would do this all the way around. On all the different overlaps. simulate some grain lines just going to gently rub my shader 
in the direction the grain would be running. By making a little bit of darker line and then shading under it a little bit. Make it look like a little bit of a wrinkle in the fabric. Grain lines will be just like in wood. They won't necessarily be consistent. They won't run all the way through. I am not much of a pyographer. I've been doing it just over a year. Uh, there are some very good pyrography groups if you're interested in such things that really there are some exceedingly talented people doing pyrography. know how good that's showing up. Anyway, I will do that all the way around. When I get all done, it will look something like this. I hope. Uh, these are just a couple of lines and then um, darken between the lines and leaving the other spots tight and again some some little grain lines in between. Same thing on the bottom. This has um, just a couple coats of spray can lacquer on it, sanded. A couple more coats. It gives it a nice, nice sheen. So anyway, that's how I do one of these. I've got several of them started. Different stages of completion. Here's a little one, a little bit different shape. I guess the only thing left to say is, if you like this video, I hope you subscribe and um, share it with your friends and give me a thumbs up if you like it. If there's anything you think I can show better, let me know. And um, thanks for watching.